Ben's both closer to the lens and huge, so I just look like a tiny man, tiny little man, more so than usual. <laughs> Looks like. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, I miss when Beeble was on the podcast because <laughs> at least then I was, I was fucking above average. You were fucking. <laughs> Beeble and I were fucking. Welcome to the D pad. Oh my god. I think we're in. I think we're probably. Oh. In. I think if we're gonna, uh, that's the kind of note that people like us will start on. So sure. Welcome to the inaugural, inaugurable, the inaugurable episode of our new sort of podcast. You can inaugurate yeah. the D-pad fuck title out of this uh, podcast. Coming. My name is John. Uh, I'm Rick. Hi everyone. I am Ben. <laughs> <laughs> this is the machine it's that has so replaced nice Ben. Nice to meet you. And yeah, this okay. is this is sort right. of our <laughs> this is sort of our our test our little test run. We're gonna do we're we're having sort of an anniversary special yeah. today. As you guys are watching this, happy is the, anniversary, you two. Thank yeah, you. we're. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna like lean in for a fake kiss, but instead you, you just gave me your <laughs> cheek for a genuine kiss. You came so in. I was like, well, came, I can't I can't uh, back out now. That'll be gay. Well, you, came, yeah. you came in like this. You came in like. <laughs> like because i was gonna do the fake like hand thing but then oh, you, oh okay. then there's like here's my cheek and well, you just, smiled so what was i gonna do well, i kissed your cheek you, you see a face coming at you like yeah that's like, not what if, you do if you adorable. start if you had if you had been doing like like the actual like, like kissy face then i might have actually been like okay we're doing getting the face thing but like you came at it with such a non and this expression is, like what's happening like we're just gonna you touch faces together yeah right? i don't know <laughs> don't you know that the vacant stare open mouth is what brings women to your general presence i don't understand i do that all the time and i have no luck so really you have you have luck i mean not lately but it it, it has happened yeah okay so So uh, welcome to uh the d-pad uh after dark i think is what yeah which is uh d-pad after dark d-p-a-d illuminati now it um, i'm glad that we explained it i would (laughs) instead of leaving it to anybody to figure it out themselves our fans already figured out before you even said that like our fans just know what we're doing before we do it which is super creepy they're probably watching us yeah yeah. Hey, B-Sud. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to say a few things. Well, that's is, good because this is a podcast. We should yeah. hopefully be saying a lot of things. I have had a lot of caffeine and a lot of sunlight today. And a lot of sausages. Oh, so many sausages. I'm so full. Look at it. You, you can put this in the video. I, uh, my friend uh, De- You're gonna Deanna. You're going to show us how full of sausages you my, are? My friend Deanna got this. It is a brat dog. <laughs> Um, which is a giant foot long. So we'll put, maybe we'll put it in the video. Um, it's a giant foot long sausage covered in cheese and a pretzel based hot dog roll. My God. Anyway, so she's dead now. And I want wow. to say that this is the what anniversary of the D pad. This, this is, why is we're doing this. This is the seventh anniversary of our very first podcast episode back in 2011. And seven Imagine. is a very important number because it's prime and it's lucky. Is it prime? Seven. Yeah, oh, what seven times. What I thought you were saying. Seven. I thought you were saying 2011. I'm just like, I, I couldn't. Oh. I couldn't tell you. I don't your, know. <laughs> your math brain was too many steps ahead. It didn't. It didn't work. 2011 might it might be. be. Prime. I mean, it's, it's not so even. So I just assume it's already prime to start with at that yeah, point. I know we do. <laughs> it's either even numbers or prime numbers. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's all you get. Um, Twenty-one prime number. It yeah. might be. It actually might be. I don't. Somebody out there uh, editing. editing Twenty-one's Rick. definitely not a prime number. Twenty-one. No. Twenty-one. Yeah, is okay. Not. okay. Tw- yeah. Be 2011 still. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> So you can't just yeah. ignore the zero one in the middle. Never mind. Seven years. Seven years. Imagine and if we had taken this time and like written a novel or like I've tried. It, well, I guess hasn't the, turned out well. Okay, fair. Never mind. I've then. got a couple. Like, it would have been shitty. Apparently. A novel and three screenplays. And what none novel? Of them you never out. told me about this novel. It was a novelization of a sc- screenplay that I wasn't getting far enough with, so I was okay. trying to okay. reconfigure it and it didn't okay. work out that way either. So what about a novelization of you failing to write a screenplay? Oh, that's every that's I, every book. Every I, book. I, that, <laughs> wow. Hmm. Uh, I don't think you have a good understanding of the stories of many popular no, books. No, that's the every great book. The is about Rick failing to write. The Odyssey is like. just about is just about um, was that Homer or is that the Iliad? No, that's the Simpsons. Uh, Homer wrote it. The Odyssey is about Odysseus. Yes, no, I know yeah. that. Right. I'm talking. The, the Odyssey is about, is about Homer. The Odyssey is about Homer failing to write the Odyssey. That's what it is. Are you likening yourself to Homer right now? Because I mean, like. I mean, I do like strawberry donuts. Those are pretty great. <laughs> oh, okay. It's my yeah. favorite kind. <laughs> strawberry sprinkles. Off, <laughs> off topic. So, so big tangent. Why, why are we doing this podcast? Because so seven years ago, it was me and Rick and not you. Yeah. And you should just be happy to be here. Well, hey, so I'll see you later. April 3rd, <laughs> April 3rd 2011, <laughs> me, John, and uh, Nick Beeble oh, uh, started. We had our first episode of the D-Pad. And I'm just a large version of Beeble. 
that's true. You are the inverse <sighs> of Beeble. No, you drink a lot less than Beeble. The oh, inverse of Beeble. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. It took me a yeah. second. That's what inverse means. I know what inverse means. I just started saying that before you finished saying the thing you said. Anyway. Oh, okay. That's true. I heard you. So, so we we kept it going. We we recorded. We had a Zoom handheld recorder that we did those episodes on. Back in the day. And then we put them up on Sundays. And then finally, we started working with Unregular Radio to do live broadcast web radio, which now, was awesome. It was cool, but they are now defunct. Yes. Um, uh, that changed over to Dig uh, Dig Radio Boston. Also defunct. Also defunct. Uh, possibly for similar reasons to why we ended up leaving there in the first place. And uh, now we're bringing to noise and Ben's bringing to funk. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not playing Chrono Trigger right now. <laughs> We should be, because yeah. fuck, what are we doing? Why, we're, I'm on camera babbling. It's just like April 3rd is sort of the birthday of the podcast. What's your birthday? April 2nd. Right. Yeah. It was so, my uh, 24th birthday. Rick got himself the D-pad for his birthday. <laughs> I did. And, uh, the greatest <laughs> gift of all. It's my 24th <laughs> birthday. I'm A about to ceaseless turn... treadmill of unending labor. By the yeah. time you guys see this, I'm going to be 31. Oh, wow. We started the show when I had just turned 24. So has the suicidal Welcome ideation the started club. yet? What's up? Oh, welcome to the club. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you see? I, I don't know if I actually showed you guys in the edit for for seriously the Mega Man NT Warrior stream video that went up has the thing where it's like, oh, Tesla's mad because she turned thirty, and we have the thirty, thirty, thirty one, but the thirty on mine is slowly crawling oh. to thirty one. <laughs> oh, nice. That's cute. It's like yeah, it's yeah. like it's gonna come out like within forty eight hours of. Right. I may as well play the play yeah. the joke straight. And I'm gonna um, be thirty for like another year. Most of one. Most of still one. Yeah, yeah, seven yeah, months. Seven, I think. Yeah, yeah. A little like over seven. seven. We're about to hit. Yeah. So. Seven. Um, yeah, so so we shut down the podcast April third, twenty fourteen. We had a big three anniversary because, finale because at that point our YouTube channel was was doing yeah. better and we were, was more interesting to us at the time. Yeah, the legendary Let's Play was taking off at least considerably better than anything we were doing before. So we wanted to focus on that. We let the podcast go. Two years later, for April third, we did a fifth anniversary special, uh, and that one we did have Ben for. I was there. He was. You did a great job, buddy. Yes, by showing up. Yes, <laughs> and uh, and that was pretty cool. And we got to just kind of rehashed the last two years and talk about that. And we had kind of been talking since we shut down the podcast four years ago. Like it'd be really neat to bring it back in some form. Yeah. And I think we did once or twice since then, just as like a weird bonus thing for the channel. And so, Um, but but we're thinking about maybe doing this a little more regularly. Yeah. This is kind of bringing it back and it's got, we have a, a new idea for how to present it. We had a way to, to bring it in terms of video and we wanted yeah. to like change the format up a bit. It used to be like, here's general news. Here's yeah. like silly birthdays. Here's an Ouya you know, segment. Because everyone wanted to come to the D pad for their general news. Yeah. yeah. And not like, their general not like, news. Yeah. Not like general news, but Very like important. still Pop small yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, but so <laughs> we didn't uh, think I would run with it, but I, I ran with it. We have a couple ideas for formats that we're still trying out. Um, two of which are are going to be coming down the line as we as we kind of, but not too far. So uh, yeah. buckle in. We don't yeah. want to spoil it yet because it's a great idea. You're welcome. The, and uh, the general you really idea did you wanna... have a lot of caffeine, didn't you? Yeah. I just feel like we don't want to be boring on camera. <laughs> you know, That's like you're in true. Like a, a two right now. Yeah. So like two. I'm an extra three to bring you up to five on top of my normal eight. So I'm like an eleven. Well, so numbers. Yeah. Just crank it up to 11. The big difference, I think, between what we're trying to do with this one as opposed to the old one is every episode has kind of a singular real focus. Yeah. Like there's going to be some tangents and stuff, obviously, but it used to be before we just kind of had here's just stories, all sorts of kinds of stories. Are there going to be tangents? Because like we're like 14 minutes in and we I haven't know, talked I know. about our topic yet. So the big, so, so the that's big, why this is the first episode. Yeah. This is us kind of explaining it, getting the training wheels on and then off and then yeah. on again because yeah. we're bad at this. But, uh, the the focus for this very first episode, uh, I thought was kind of kind of a, a good choice for us because it's an easy one for us to talk at length about. Um, our second episode way back in the I day was us talking about the brand new Nintendo 3DS when that came out. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch. It's also important because we're switching from a Let's Play to a podcast. Yes, we're not flipping actually the switch. Switching. We're doing both. There's we're a little light adding... switch. Yeah, there's so. like a light switch that says let's play and we just flipped it to podcast, podcast. and we can just yep. and the only difference yeah. is that John talks about six words a minute uh, or six words a second faster in the podcast version yeah um, up from like 0.3 a second probably I don't know yeah it's a tough math to <laughs> figure out a tough math a tough there was math. a math it was tough <laughs> uh, okay so the Nintendo Switch yeah right it's my favorite system of the last 
when did the Nintendo Super Nintendo come out? Uh, 1991. One? 90? August 91. So yeah, it's definitely my favorite system of the last, I guess, 27, 27 years. years. Yeah. So um, since the since the Super NES. The best yes. system since the Super NES. I personally think yeah. so. And a big part of that is because... It's right here in front of us. It's, yeah, which is helpful. Like. No other consoles are closer to us right now. <laughs> then and true. therefore, winner. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this, and I think it's part to do for three things, okay. or partly to do with three things. There are um, really accessible, like, pixely uh, DLC games, uh, download one. games, right? So retro like, style there's indie that titles. Retro style indie titles. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. They're affordable. They're fun. They're great. I've been playing Super Meat Boy on my Switch, of all things, yeah. a lot, yeah. because it's easy to pick up and play. I generally only play games for 20 minutes at a time because otherwise I get crippling guilt that I'm not working on music or freelance. Right. And uh, I love it. So having that genre is great. I having think the the, the the Switch is starting to like really put up some numbers in the indie game community. They are. Like, like the people are looking at, you know, Steam used to be like the big indie platform because it was easy to develop for PC and stuff. But like yeah. the Switch is really, from what I understand, is starting well, to be a, get a really that, good yeah, absolutely. share of the Part market. of that is, is Steam kind of, uh, shutting down the green light service mm. right Th- mm. those people need a place to go yeah and, and that was a it was an abused service for a long time you get stuff like yes. digital homicide which abused the ever-loving crap out of green light and and all these other like asset flips and things like yeah. that mm-hmm. and it seemed for a while like so nintendo has made it pretty clear since the wii they're not that interested in going toe-to-toe with microsoft and sony anymore right. those guys they're are doing going, their own they're thing. going big gun sure. style yeah sure they want to go for but ironically graphics, huge games which is fine but ironically real quick i will let you continue sure, this yeah. point but ironically now we got skyrim dark souls breath of the wild yeah. we've got triple a yeah. titles of epic hardcore gaming experiences on the switch without nintendo even really trying yeah. well so that's the thing a I, generation behind or so but still yeah. it's it's it, we're also getting a lot point too and where the console generations are such small jumps yeah nobody cares i'm very excited for a brand new triple a title la noir on the switch <laughs> I Fresh off uh, being yeah. like 12 years old well, by Grant, now. I've never played L.A. Noire. I haven't either. And if yeah. I were to play it, the Switch is a perfectly viable option. Yeah, it's true. But it's just, just the game's been around for a while. Is on so PSA. the fact that it's portable, yeah. um, and I was going to continue your thought, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nintendo made a really strong push to become accessible to developers. They yeah. did. The Wii U was a nightmare for developers. It custom just, like, chipset, totally custom, custom firmware, custom everything. firmware. Like you couldn't use any of the tr- uh, the classic frameworks on it, like Unity or whatever. Yep, yep. Um, it had its own control scheme with the weird fucking like stylus screen that was yep. janky and oh, didn't I work that, that well. It had a stylus. Yeah, yeah it just yeah. like wasn't that good, and so yeah. everyone hated it. And so Nintendo, Nintendo was the smartly, only company that knew how to develop for their own right, platform. Right. And that's a, that's a real problem. Right. So smartly, they really just followed a lot of standards, opened it up, changed the way they did, they did yeah. things, and now people are super psyched to work. They right. have the NVIDIA Tegra chipset, which mm. is widely used all over the place. Uh, they made their dev kit incredibly cheap. It's only $450 to buy a dev kit. Fucking, I could buy a dev kit for the Switch. I yeah. actually considered it at one point just because it'd be neat to tool around with. And Fucking do it. That'd be like, cool. Like, why not? If we came up with an, a little fun, silly idea that could be... I'm sure making, making a, a game is like game. 20 times harder than... Oh, I know. I know. I mean, and remember I that to... they're also... Although the development kits are cheap, they're still very picky about what gets... Oh, absolutely. Which is good. The eStore, which the is Nintendo, a good thing. The right, Nintendo right. seal it's... of quality is still an important part of yeah. like their entire framework yeah. internally. Which is, I think, kind of why they're doing so well in the indie market because they do vet the games that yeah, get put yeah. out and I mean, it's, it's has like everything else right. and that was sure, a, right, right, right. but like it's still like they're they're keeping a, a good rep- reputation right. you know yeah, yeah like nothing buggy nothing yeah needlessly vulgar none of yeah, the problems yeah. that you had with green light right right Steam, exactly right. and it seemed for a while What's that game by that crazy guy that references james joyce that like it's oh like, baba badalgaro yeah that yeah by like terry kavanaugh right. the guy who made uh super hexagon the guy who made vvvvv which right. is also on the switch right now yeah um, so that so some uh, ups and downs for him then he has, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well his whole thing like that one was just a and that, that was on Ouya fine, not the, weird. that was on Ouya not Steam oh yeah yeah um, Ouya had even lower standards than Steam which is I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> yeah, it did not have standards. No, that's they literally how. said like you could they essentially said, you know, you upload it and we'll put it on there, which it is wouldn't be such, the D-pad podcast if we weren't. I guess that's Ouya. our Ouya oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. We haven't done that in four years. Did we do one of those during our fifth anniversary special? Probably. I you know <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, in our hearts we did. Yeah. Oh, um, in my hearts I do that every morning when I wake up and look in the mirror. Anyway. But yeah, uh, Nintendo, part of their strategy. So prior to his death, Satoru Iwata was really resistant to having Nintendo enter the mobile market because they were like, 
because uh, he his whole thing was as soon as we do that we kind of stop being Nintendo because mobile phone game development is a total like it's just a free for all. Yeah, there is just billions of games, tons it's of copyware, ninety five percent cash grabs. Yeah. yeah, more. But so they the problem, however, was that with Nintendo no longer standing up against Sony and Microsoft with their like top tier systems. They were kind of having trouble getting a foothold, especially with the Wii U. The Wii got off on the novelty of like, it's a different play style, very simple, and that had all of its medical uses, which helped it out a lot. Uh, but the Wii U didn't really have that. So they had to, they realized that they were more up against Steam for its indie titles and mobile phones in the first place because now the 3DS was struggling against that too. So they ultimately uh, talked with a couple of mobile developers, particularly a DNA to make Super Mario Run, which yeah. was a pretty solid success. Like, every now and then, I still pick it up for... They were disappointed with the outcome, but yeah. they, it wasn't a failure. Yeah. It wasn't. The problem is, it's not a humongously sustainable game, the way that I they set it, it up. I played it, and I was like, I don't have any need to play this ever again. It was but a, that's how I feel about every mobile game. It was yeah. a fun way to waste a couple minutes Kingdom Rush. Kingdom Rush was good. Anyway. Yeah. Um, um, Pokemon Go with Niantic, same <sighs> idea. Massive release. I know. And it was a huge disappointment huge until like a success, year and a half in. Huge success, but huge disappointment. Yeah. yeah. Apparently now it's like a completely different game and everybody loves it, but well, I'm too exhausted by the whole process. I think it's completely process. different. I no, think at its think core, the, it's got all the same core problems. Sure, but like... With just, you know, a fancy... You gotta now grind games, up your Pidgeys into Pidgey candy to make a bigger Pidgey. Like what? That's the old game. Now there's raids and team raids and... You, you have still to, have to grind your Pidgeys. Yes. <laughs> it's so hilarious it's to me. fundamentally opposed to the core yeah. conceit of Pokemon. It is anti-Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Make a bond with this little creature. Yep. And instead, you grind the bones of your little creature to eat a candy that makes you roid it out. Yep. I forget, really. You turn all your Pokemon into horrible, right. sugar, right. yeah. sweet tooth <laughs> yeah. cannibals. Yeah. Sweet Tooth Cannibal sweet tooth Shia LaBeouf. Because it's, it's, it's <laughs> actual. <laughs> I love that so much. So I just saw that for the first time like a month. Nice. Sarah was you, playing. You have day. a Pidgey. Yeah. You catch a bunch of shitty Pidgeys. You you turn them into food and you feed your, your Pidgey. Yeah. You feed That's your Pidgey correct, shitty, yeah. shitty Pidgey candy. Yeah. It's specifically, it's not even that it's good. Pi That's the other thing too. It's like, the, so they took, they kind of twisted a core mechanic of an entire genre that already existed, which is merging games. Um, Final Fantasy had a card-based merging game a while back. Um, there's a whole slew of them. The idea being you have monsters and you merge them together to make a more powerful one. But instead of doing yeah. that, you say, here are my two Pidgeys. Well, this one's better, so this one I'm just going to sell for candy. Mm. You get a little bit of candy, and then when you have like hundreds of candies, you can level your dude up by like one. Right. They don't imply that you like grind down the Pidgey and get no, the candy, you send but it, the only way to get a Pidgey candy is to give yeah. away a Pidgey. I think the, so like we can connect the in -game those game explanation. I think is you send it back to the professor and he gives you candy and, and he grinds candy. them down. Yeah. Into you candy. Send it back to an old man and he gives a child some candy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yep. Actually, is the professor an old professor in there? I don't game? think so. I think oh, it was a young, was it a woman in this one? I don't know. Anyway, uh, women can be creepy. We're getting a little far away from the switch, though. Yes. We so, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so in doing this, they it accomplished a couple things. One was they started to get a foothold against the mobile market, which helped <laughs> them like strategize for a more <coughs> mobile sort of device. And it freed up resources by outsourcing their development. They were able to focus more on the development of the switch. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Genpo Genpei Yokoi yep. made the Game Boy. Yeah. Satoru Iwata <laughs> is dead. Like, yeah. who, whose brainchild is this? Satoru Iwata. Uh, he, yeah, he, he did a he, lot of work on this. He worked but he on it, but did he come up with the initial core idea? Sort of. It was a joint effort by Shigeru Miyamoto, um, Satoru Iwata, uh, Tatsumi Kimishima, who is yep. now the president of, of Nintendo. Yep. Um, there were a couple others involved in there. Um, it, it makes sense, though, because if you think about the Wii U, yeah, it was almost this idea. Right? Yeah, you had to be t you had to be tethered to this, the actual system, but the controller could act on its own. Yeah, essentially. And so it's this is the next step of that. So I guess yeah. that is a logical conclusion. I think we're gonna reach a point, twenty, thirty years from now, where people mistake the Wii U as being an intentional intermediary step, mm. as opposed to the Wii U was sort of a half measure, but it was an attempt at moving forward, and then the switch was. Okay, that didn't work. This is what but we the core meant to ideas. Do. Yeah. yeah, the core ideas can be done better. Look like it wasn't recording for no. some, sorry. Uh, but the core ideas are going to be are present in this. So you have so they looked at the at the Wii U and said, "All right, it's cool that, you know, we meant for this to be a two-screen system, 
but it's cool. It was always, people seem to like that you could play on your TV or you could do it in your hand. So why don't we just make that one of the core features? You right, can yeah. play it on your TV right. in the dock or you can pull it out yeah. and play it in your hands. And, and another thing, I don't know if you've actually used a game that does this, but like World of Goo, for example, yeah. it's like a $3 game on the eShop. And yep. it's like an old, like 2008 really iPhone old. game. I think the Wii but it's, had it. it's good. And so you can take off the Joy-Con and use it as good as a Wiimo. Like it's yeah. as accurate as a Wiimo yeah. Plus. The huh. Joy-Cons are surprising. Like they that feature they don't even fucking talk about, but it's in there. Yeah. At this point, the the gyro controls in Nintendo uh controllers have gotten so good that they stopped marketing it because it's just like, like with the Wiimote, there were issues with it. Like yeah, obviously yeah. Twilight Princess wasn't a good example, Skyward but Skyward Sword, Sword like, like, yeah, Skyward yeah. Sword had trouble. Like it was decent for for like a first real go at having like really rapid motion with that stuff. They did okay, yeah. but it was never refined enough. And with the Wii U, that was actually something they did okay-ish as well. Like when you had the gamepad, it did respond to gyroscopic yeah. controls pretty well. But with this, it's smooth. It's really yeah. smooth. Yeah, it's clearly it higher higher level tech. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why a fucking set of Joy Cons is like ninety bucks or whatever. It's like it's not cheap. Yeah, eighty bucks I think for for a pair. Um, the pro controller actually is actually cheaper. Bucks. Yes, it is. That's the that's the funny part. But it's less functionality than the actual. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's and then there's stuff like there's in I think the right Joy-Con there's an infrared camera. Yeah. And that's the one yep. that gets used for one two switch doing the sandwich game. You may remember Rennie and Ian facing off doing no, the nuclear the codes are contained within the sandwich. I love your I will follow your face. God, that is ominous. Uh, yeah, it was nightmares, to... nightmares. Oh, yeah. Rennie's face was my lock screen for a while. <laughs> yeah, which I remember, is great because at that, that point you had met him literally once. That I time. think that was the day. That was <laughs> that the time. day. So a uh, functional yeah. stranger to you <clears throat> was your. That's great. I yeah. love it. Yeah, love it. Uh, was, I have had an eyelash in my eye this whole fucking <laughs> recording. I'm sorry. I just you felt gotta, like you gotta people... hit yourself in the back of the head and I'll knock the eyelash out. Yeah. Oh my god. So I oh. I took some notes and I'm gonna try not to use them as a crutch too much, but. Uh, That's what notes are for, man. They're, it's it's they're true. A literal, literal crutch, uh, well, not a literal crutch. But they <laughs> so, are a crutch. so you could write notes on a crutch, and then your notes would literally be your crutch. <laughs> yeah. So, something that might be worth talking about, and and we'll probably kind of bookend a little bit with this. But um, one of the big so earlier on, it was known as uh, Nintendo NX. Yep. They announced it when uh, when for Nito Xavier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's favorite. <laughs> yes. Well, at E3 2016, <laughs> person, John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at at E3 2016, I don't remember if this was the reveal. Of, I think this was the reveal of Breath of the Wild with the trailer with um I I think it was Shigeru Miyamoto, but it might have been Satoru Wada. No, it was um, the guy. Uh, oh, it fuck, was um, what's his name, the Zelda guy. Yes, um the, Onuma. The Honcho. Yeah, yeah, Eiji Onuma. Eiji Onuma. Uh talking about like, "Oh, I'll be really, you know, we wanted to you know, we we thought that it'd be really cool to give people a sense of adventure and scope. And you can yeah. see even these mountains in the background. And then he fades oh. away and you see Link on a horse running from a guardian in right. really beautiful trailer yeah. stuff. And, and it just like, keeps like zooming back. And you're like, how big? Yeah. 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 And you know. in the game, it totally delivers. The draw distance on that is ludicrous. Like, yeah. That that game is one of the few things that actually lived up to the hype yeah like here's a huge open world legend of zelda game you can go anywhere anything you can see you can get to i mean for the most part there are some edges to the world but like they didn't fall on that at all this is no this is interesting to me though so you're saying you're totally up to the hype but i've asked you both and you often talk about the fact that the game has a lot of problems. It's it not your favorite Zelda game. Yep. It's like, you know, it's good. I'm glad I played it, it but I wouldn't play it again. It lived up to the hype that it advertised. It, it, it yes. did everything that it advertised to I do. See. Correct, okay. yeah. It, I, I haven't say, played it. Uh, I actually have not put my hands on the controller for that game, period. Yet. The reason I would say it's not my favorite Zelda game is if I'm in the mood for Zelda, you I am to, uh, far sooner going to reach for Twilight. Actually, not even Twilight Princess. Like Wind Waker, A Link to the Past, yeah. uh, Link's Awakening, something along those lines that feels more like a you know, really yeah. core piece of Zelda. Breath of the Wild is good, but that is a major time commitment. It is. And sometimes you have to really be in it's, the mood for like, I'm going to be yeah, playing yeah, for like yeah. four hours and get a very small amount done. It's a super done. great game to kind of sit back and relax to and play. Yeah. But, I wonder if in a few years, right, the, the delta between Link to the Past and Wind Waker is huge. Yeah. But we've had time to digest it now and they both That's about feel a decade, like about a Zelda, decade between right? them. So in a decade, Skyward Sword, or I'm sorry, Breath of the Wild might feel like a Zelda game to yeah. us. It might like enter that canon and they, start to feel right. But right said, now it's so new. Like, you know, they said their next Zelda game, they're going to try to build off of, you know, the basis for, for Breath of the Wild. I hope the it's... The basis for Breath of the Wild? <laughs> 
No, Mikau was Mikau was a Majora's Mask guitarist. Was he a guitarist? He was a guitarist, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, but so bonist. Mm. Sorry. Yikes. No, that's Zor- Link, that's Link Zor- in Ocarina Zor- Zor- of Time. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, mm. Have you seen, there's a, there's a great tweet online uh, that's, uh, that says the shape of water 2017 and yeah. it shows Link swimming and, and Ruto giving like the sex eyes. It's, oh my God, yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's the scene where she's like yeah. swimming up What's to What's up? Like, you want my yeah. sapphire? <laughs> I was sitting behind someone on a plane who was watching Shape of Water. Yeah. And I get that that is not the intended cinematic experience. However, that movie looks like complete bullshit. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Every but scene I, was, I saw, I was like, the, "Are you, what? You're not serious." What, what? I enjoyed it a lot. I had major issues with how they did the plot because there were like big jumps and stuff, and yeah. then also, like, it. I like Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. That did not strike me as a best picture movie. Sure, it struck yeah. me as a nominee, but I w- I was shocked that that won best picture. Well, what was it yeah. up against? Um, like, was it just like a bunch of shit this year? Is it, like, no, I didn't watch were, any of these movies for the record. There were other so. decent ones in there. I don't know. I don't have the list in front of me right now, but there were other decent movies that were in the list. None of which I saw, but I had heard really good things about all of them, including shape of water. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and the visuals were incredible. It it, it deserved all the really because it looked like a dude in a rubber suit looking sad the whole movie. The the digital effects were really good. The 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 um or the visual effects the, the practical, practical effects, effects were, were a little lacking at times. The vet, yeah, no, the, the, the practical they're just like try practical have, effects were fine except for, uh, there were a few just, scenes that are like uh, you got to look, see too close. Yeah, you got to we look too close. I'm thinking yeah. of the bathtub. And I'm just yes. like, I don't buy you, this at all. When you do a monster movie, if you're a guy in a rubber suit, you don't get that. You don't get the camera that close to the rubber right. suit because you're going to see the seams. Yeah. And, and you know uh, what's great? That movie is coming to the Switch. It, it, yeah. Shape of Water 2019. Play as the fish man or the hot woman. But more about the Switch. Yeah, more about the Switch. Yeah, I knew that's what you were going <laughs> yeah. for, but I was going to try and keep it on Shape of uh, Water. <laughs> there, was, there was a direction I was going with all that. But oh, yeah, so they, they did the trailer for Breath of the Wild. And alongside announcing it in the first place, which everyone was just like blown away by, they all said, oh, yeah, by the way, it's also coming to... Than it, what we're calling Nintendo NX, and was like, whoa, whoa. wait a minute, oh yeah, shit! Like yeah, no one was because yeah, yeah. the Wii U had only oh been out things. The the Wii U uh, came out at the end of 2012, so I guess you know at that point that was only three and a half years in. That's a really short amount of time for them to already be like, by the way, this game's coming out soon, and there's going to be a new a new system like to come along with it. And everyone was kind of like the rumor mill was was swirling up, and after the announcement. Um, Miyamoto specifically did not tell investors anything more because they're like, it's still early enough in the process that we don't want somebody else to steal our shit before we, we can mm, get true, out the true. gates. Did you uh, hear about those rumors where there's like a Chinese handheld gaming device that looks, it's not really a rumor, it's true. Well, yeah. That's a lot <laughs> like... the rumor that there's the truth of. <laughs> yeah, that it looks like the Switch, but it came out two years before the Switch or like four years before the Switch or something. Interesting. Yeah. Now, what I'm wondering is, was it a, was it a knockoff of the Wii U initially that now is just because the uh, the switch has a lot of physical similarities really to the it was like a so like you know a kind of a no-name chinese system with controllers that slid on and off the top like that can't be real look it up Uh, there's look it up now (laughs) but we'll follow up and uh i swear i saw that and was like (laughs) i mean you know uh similar enough to be concerning but again it might not have been real it might have been something i don't know maybe it looked similar but like the functionality was nowhere the the sliding on and off of joy con like things on the side strikes me as like something seems off about that i don't know yeah well i mean i guess we should look sorry i should have come with that uh uh in note form but so in so form <laughs> uh in october they announced the name nintendo switch and then in january they announced it was coming out in march 3rd yeah like that's i've yeah. ne- i don't remember a single time that a brand new console has been announced and they're like by the way it's coming out in like eh, six weeks like, it would have been awesome shit. if they were just like yeah it's coming out in today yeah. That's happened. Good fucking They're luck. Now That's happened before. <laughs> yeah, but not with the Switch. Not means. with the Switch. Um, I want to say, uh, was it the? It wasn't the Sega Genesis. I think the Sega Saturn. <laughs> they literally like a lot went, of good that did. They went to uh, <laughs> they went to like the game developers conference or or something. It wasn't oh, three. Yeah, it was the Saturn. But they went to like GDC like uh, uh, 1997 or and something. It's and available like, now. Basically, yeah. They want to say no say, you it. can buy it right <laughs> now. And all the retailers were like, you told us it was in three weeks. 
and they're like, "Oops, sorry. Anywhere you can buy them, you can buy them." So like some retail, like Kmart and stuff, was like, "Sweet, we got this." Yeah. And like tons of retailers are pissed off. You know, Kmart very capable, very well, on top. <laughs> that's the thing. If you just had the stock ready, then you were great. So so a lot of stores not having it ready. I mean twos of people were disappointed it was really sega's biggest misstep. oh no i mean the saturn was <laughs> sega's biggest misstep yeah. let's be honest here and hey, we blame hey that twos moment. of millions Give of people the saturn were... some credit it had symphony of the night on it with special features i mean that's true but it, that's got to be available for some other platform by now nope oh wow symphony of the night uh, well not with it, the not with the stuff. features oh, the the Ron, stuff. was it rondo of blood what's it called I forget no, what it was just Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. It was like Symphony of the Night, blah, blah, edition, but I don't remember. Oh, Saturn edition? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Special edition? Yeah. Uh, Somewhat special. But as far as so, I know, they never re-released that. That stuff's just... They got... They... Basically, from the moment that E3 hit, they were talking up the NX, and then in October, the Switch, yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Like, they were... Uh, they went on The Tonight Show and had Jimmy Fallon play Breath of the Wild live. It was the first live oh, yeah, demo of the game. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I remember that. Uh, they had, in February, they had um, in he three different American it, cities, of course. they had, like, here's, like, a, a fake living room set up, and they invited people to come try out the Switch, including John Cena. Um, in France... John Cena? In, in, <laughs> yes. In France, they had the Grand Palais, like, had these giant banners on the side, and they switched one of them out for a giant Switch banner, and it's like... That's a kind of big deal. It's a bold move, yeah. Uh, they had a Super Bowl ad. They've never had a Super Bowl ad ever. I mean, and Super Bowl Fifty One, they had a huge ad for the Switch. Like they were drumming up. I feel loads like of, they of knew awareness. it was like their next thing needed to be a hit, or yeah. they were going to fade into obscurity. And yeah. they nailed it. I mean, yeah. all well, of it worked. Well, part of the issue with the Wii U was that there was so much like unclarity over is this a new system or is it a peripheral or is it an upgrade? Yeah. And so people were buying parts for a Wii U, not realizing that it was a whole new system. And like, yeah. there was just confusion all over the place. I imagine like that was probably like relatively limited to like grandmas and idiots. No, um, I mean the Wii U sales were awful. It's actually among the worst console sales in history. They, they, hmm. as of, uh, as of the launch of the switch, the Wii U sold, about 13 and a half million units. I bet if Smash hadn't come out, that would have been half. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost almost guaranteed. Yeah. 13. I literally did not buy a single other Wii U game. It came with Wind Waker. Yep. I bought Smash and I was done. Yep. What did we buy for? We got Pokemon Tournament. We got Wind Waker <laughs> HD. We got. That was bundled with it, though. Well, I bought the bundle. I already had a, I had a Wii U, but I bought the bundle because. Uh, I thought I bought the bundle. There was a One reason for it. We're One married. of us did, it's yeah. Fine. Common law. Um, but yeah, we didn't buy much for the for the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, Mario Maker. I think was another one. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was cool. And the new, if they're smart, they'll put Mario Maker on this. Yeah, I'd I be mean, surprised if they didn't. Um, be awesome. But so the Wii U in its entire lifetime before it was, it's no longer in production. It, at the end of January, it was out of production. There was a five week gap. In Japan, where Wii. they were not producing, they might have still been producing Wii's, but they were not producing the Wii U, and they hadn't launched the Switch yet. Like that yeah. was how bad the Wii U did. Yeah, well, they. Right. I mean, that makes more sense with all of this advertising campaigning and everything they well, had because Nintendo, like they had, they had to, they had to shift gears and move to the yeah. next thing, yep. or else they were dead in the water. They also seem to have some supply chain issues. Like they haven't been yeah. able to keep up with Nintendo Minis or SNES Minis. Yep, um, they got better. They did re-release Switches, the SNES. Minis. I mean, you couldn't get a Switch for months. I mean, yeah. they were really hard to get for a while. Well, so if I didn't have a guy, Rennie, it when it, been when tough it for me launched, they and sold what a guy. He is. They were expecting <laughs> their target was two million in the first month, and they sold three million. Yeah, which is already fifty percent over target is a pretty big deal. Yeah. By the end of their first year, they probably would have sold more if they had had more. Yeah. By the end of their first year, they outsold the entire lifetime sales of the Wii U. They're yeah. currently they after on on as of the end of March, they are. Currently sitting at uh, at just under 15 million units. Yeah, it is the fastest selling Nintendo system ever, yeah. and it is the fastest selling console in the U.S. and Japan all time. That's great. That's the awesome. fastest selling system anywhere. Ever. I would time. assume that in Brazil or it's China, the or there's something. a pretty huge one. Yeah, the Master System is still to this day sold in Brazil. What? Um, yeah. Uh, by Tech Toy for a while. I think Sega took the reins back. Oh, but, oh okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, there are other systems that are in like the le like not lesser markets, but not the primary ones. Like I US, feel like Japan, the Game Boy Color has to be up there. UK, Pokemon, because um, Pokemon, probably yeah. 
the Game Boy Advance was a humongous seller when it came out, mm. and that was one of the most powerful ones. Uh, it might still be the best-selling handheld. The Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, and the 3DS are all like trying juggernauts. Trying to play that nowadays, though, is fucking ridiculous how you can't see shit. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't want to shut you down, but... Uh, what other? But I'm going to. What, no, no, no. <laughs> but I will. Well, I'm just trying to be conscious of time, right? So, so what other f- uh, like hi- uh, factoids do you want to get out? Because I want to talk about what we like about the Switch. Yeah. What games we love most on the Switch, and what we don't like about the Switch. Well, I think we need to hit those points. One so, of the one of the so two quick ones. Yep. One in two parts, and then another big one. Uh, thank, you, thank you for the outline. To, now I know to, what you expect. <laughs> Here's my thesis. To go <laughs> along with the fact that the Switch has already sold about 15 million units, which is crazy, after yep. 13 months. Yep. 13 months today as you're watching this. Uh, the, the games on the system are selling like crazy, too. Breath of the Wild sold 6 million copies, which that's, is that's a lot. lot. Is a fucking yeah, lot. That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. Higher. You, yeah. Every Switch would have less it. than Super half Mario of Odyssey. the Switches have Breath of the Wild on it. <laughs> They've sold nine million copies of Super Mario Odyssey. That seems right. Yep. That's insane. I I think Mario one and three are the only games that have sold more. So than that. who Ever. are the f- what? Who are the six million people who own a Switch and don't have Mario? They're the ones who own Zelda. Yeah, that must be. <laughs> it. They just had to pick <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's crazy though. Is that between those two games? Every Switch user averages to having one of them. Yeah. Like, there are That's 15 a, million copies between those two games alone. There's nothing else like that in the world, though. Like, Mario and Zelda are the two... Yeah. If you name the three most... Like, the, the franchises that are definitely household names, like Mario and Zelda are I'd say at the Pokemon top of that list. Yeah, well. Mario, Zelda, yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I can't even think of what would be next. Like, if you ask a... Um, a, a Pac-Man. Yeah, if you ask sure. a, a 50-year-old mom idea. or something, right. like, what video game people if do you, you ask know? ask idiot. Mario <laughs> is probably going to be someone the who doesn't know one. anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah everybody's saying. aware of, like, Donkey Kong from the old arcade days or Mario, if yeah. not mm-hmm. both, even if there's nothing else at all. Yeah. Um, it's just I should ask my mom. So I, should, I, I should text mom and be like, Mom, should be like, tell yo, man, me, Bloodborne. Uh, tell me, <laughs> like, go deep on you. And do me, it, do it. <laughs> tell me <laughs> every like, video game character you can think of. You can name them. That'd be hilarious. You yeah. should, should. I think you should do it. But. My mom was trying to describe to me uh, Dark Souls the other day, and she's like, the one with all like the really great architecture. <laughs> that actually is it's Dark Souls. It's yeah. valid, but if it's someone like, described a game like that to me, my first guess like, might honestly be Dark Souls. Not the undead zombie character, or you know, the horrible demons you fight. Oh, the really lovely architecture. <laughs> it's true, though. Uh, That's the thing. Okay, so more factoids. Uh, the other big factoid is that Nintendo was aiming in their first year of operation that they wanted to, or actually, not even just in their first year in 2017. So in their first 10 months, they were hoping to get. About a hundred games in total between first, third, mm. uh, first party, third party, and independent titles. How many games do you think they actually put out before before the end of four hundred? Ben, sorry, I'm texting my mom. So let's say he guesses three hundred. Uh, uh, what was the question? They, how many games do you think Nintendo had on the Switch by the end of three hundred? Three hundred. Uh, they apparently had just over 320 games. All right, oh, I was so that close. Is, yeah. But think about that. The Switch. But we didn't go over. The Switch is essentially on any random day probably has a brand new game coming out on average. Yeah. yeah. More than a game a day. And there, it's, yes, there's some like mildly shovel weary indie titles, but they're not low quality. But few, yeah. Very few. There's a ton of, I me- I started making a list of like, Oh, here'd be a game. That'd be nice to mention that it came out in there. And like, it's impossible. Ready, ready. It starts here and just scroll, 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 yeah. scroll, 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 stop, scroll, 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 scroll. Like it's within just three months. Massive. The switch had an entirely better library than the Wii U with the exception of maybe smash. And now we're waiting Smash 4 is amazing, but there's <laughs> going to be a Smash it's on its own yeah. Smash, yeah. which is going to be better than every other Smash. Right, It'll be the right. Smash you've ever smashed. We need, to, we need to ask the question of what fighters do you think are going to turn up in Smash 5? Ooh. Other than the Inklings, obviously. Let's assume that everyone who's been in Smash will be in the Sure, game. yeah. Obviously, let's just assume that. Keeping out anything I know it's probably not true, but let's assume it. They've cut characters. They ice have. Climbers. I hope there there might be some licensing now. issues. Wolf, Wolf, Ice Climbers. It's fine. There'll probably be some of that. But To help fan the flames a little bit, uh, the rumor swirling around right now is that Smash 5 is going to have more of a third-party focus than previous Smash games did, which I think is trying to jump in on the same indie supporting trend that the Switch has been rolling with. Yeah, I get it. That I don't like it, cool. but I get it. I, but it's not going to feel like Smash. I would actually love it if the Smash roster 
felt almost in the realm of like Marvel versus Capcom where you have here's Nintendo and here's the newbies, the right. indie <laughs> newbies that are being invited to smash. So, I mean, I would love to see like Binding of Isaac, Isaac, Super Meat Boy guy. Yeah. Super uh, Meat Boy. Meat Boy. The is Hyper in Light there. Drifter. Or Meat uh, Boy is in What's my the game we play? Anyway. Fury, the Fury guy. Like it could yep. be cool. Like yeah. that, that uh, a lot of that could be great. I think, I think Springman is almost guaranteed to show up. It's actually that surprising is. that they haven't mentioned. Oh, oh, arms. oh, arms guy. Yeah. Um, Just say arms guy. Well, <laughs> Uh, just say arms guy and do this. I gesture. agree. I don't know the fuck anyone yeah, else yeah. is. Just... The the ones that I, I I made I made a list of six that I thought might show up. Uh, the most likely one seems to be Springman because new IP. I'm surprised the Inklings weren't in Smash Four, honestly. But I'm glad they're in five. Um, Shovel Knight. If they're gonna go with Indies, I think because they keep not only a Shovel Knight was supported since the Wii U days, but they put out three now DLCs yeah. for Shovel Knight. Yeah. Shovel Knight would be cool and, and like Specter Knight and Plague Knight and King Knight. Yeah. Put them all in there. Fuck yep. Uh, Rayman and or the Rabbids. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, Seems yeah. Like Crash, pretty... Crash is coming. Crash, Crash yeah. is on my oh, list Crash as well. Spyro, that yeah. would be cool. Spyro be neat. Spyro I hope old have... Spyro is a costume because I don't like new Spyro. Um, so here's my prediction. Sans oh, was one more. I, I just had two more. Uh, Sans from Undertale, since they're jumping on board with that. That one's like a, a really yeah. far out possibility, but it's pretty popular. And then the last one that I was again surprised didn't show up in Smash Four is Bomberman. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and they were all there. Most of those have you know reasonable cause because like they're all most of those are have a presence on Switch. Yeah. So um, in addition to those, mm-hmm. I think we'll see Knuckles. I would love, I would to see love that. I think we'll Knuckles, see Knuckles or Tails. <sighs> or both. Knuckles. Honestly, if they were blowing up their roster, all three could have wildly different fighting styles. Yeah. So why yep. not? Yep. But yep. Um, probably a new Pokemon. Yeah, well, statistically. Yeah. Yes. A gen, a gen we'll get 8 a new, Pokemon. We'll get a new Pokemon. It depends when the new Pokemon game comes out, and, though. Uh, they might make that DLC. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because it's going to be the Switch Pokemon game. Yeah. Um, and uh, unpopular unpopular opinion, Jack Skellington. From from the from Nightmare, Nightmare, from the Nightmare Before, Before Christmas. Is this just wishful thinking, or do you I, have caught reason to believe this? I, I, I've, 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 I've done my research. Uh, and uh, yeah, the studies have shown. <laughs> Study, I mean, you heard it here first. The D pad is your number one news source. That's so, the studies have shown Jack Skellington, most popular skeleton based character in Tim Burton films ever. I thought yeah. you were going to say in games ever. And I was like, that well, could be true. Skull Man. He's right. He's right. So, um, well, the thing is, I love, you know what? I would be okay with this reality where yeah. all the shit we just mentioned makes its way into the game. Mm-hmm. As long as they then also port Smash 4. Because I want my normal Smash. And I also want this weird new experimental Smash with fucking 80 characters. Well, I mean, we don't I know mean, if that's The only be... difference between those is the roster based I, off of that. It's just going like... to feel real different. You know what I mean? And like maybe yeah. I'm just being an old man, which is probably true. I do that a lot lately. But uh, I don't know. It's going to be so strange to have that many characters. It's going to feel unwieldy. The balance is going to be strange. It's I mean, going to be like we shit played from levels and items from things I've never even heard we've of now. We played Smash 4, and we've played Smash 60, 64. Uh, not like I think we played 64 last year, and the difference yeah. between those is massive. Like the original Smash Brothers had only 12 characters. Well, sure. I mean, like sorry, 14. Even Smash 4 is pushing 12. it. Do we really need a hundred Fire Emblem characters? No, I don't think we do. No, honestly, no. I'd rather see the roster get trimmed. Me too. I like, would like to see a little of both. I think Fire Emblem has kind of uh, unpopular opinion for for some, but like. I think Fire Emblem unpopular is... Unpopular opinion. I hate it when people say unpopular opinion. <laughs> you started with... Oh, no. no or did you do that? Me. We are different! <laughs> and I was very there, serious it's... with my unpopular opinion. I think Fire Emblem has too strong a representation in the Smash Brothers franchise. Everybody thinks that. That is a popular opinion. I agree that, like... <laughs> Some of them are different. Yeah, I think Robin. No I think way. Robin was a decent occlusion because it's a very. De- it's not here is a person with a sword. Yeah, it was a spell book, and that was actually a pretty different way of doing that. Here's and, an unpopular opinion. Yeah, I don't think we need two pits. One pit's fine. Agreed. <laughs> Same goes for Mario. Just kidding. That's a very popular opinion. Everyone agrees with me. I think <laughs> what they need to do is take the me fighter, uh, like thing <laughs> where you could have different entire fighters. Like, you can choose between different styles of fighting, and they need to incorporate that into the fighters. Mario doesn't need to be duped anymore. Right. Have standard Mario, 
have Dr. Yeah. Mario and have Odyssey Mario all as Mario, oh, no. and then you just choose at the bottom, like, it's, ooh, which fighting style should you employ? That's tough, though, right? Because you got to remember, on Is its Link, core, same thing. Smash Ocarina is time? meant to be kind of... Or breath. It's meant, to be, it's meant to be everything. It's meant to be pick up and play for noobs and kids, and it's yeah. meant to be, like, pro-level gaming, right? Well, so, that's why well, if that's you why add all this default. complexity with, like, oh, different fighting styles for same character and, like, 50 new characters all with different moves and then three fighting styles each, I mean, that's... That could, they're sure they could find a way around it, but it could become. All I'm bottom saying, line is, they're not going to do that because they're not going to break the formula that much. All I'm saying is, well, I mean, <laughs> we say that, but Pokemon is allegedly going through a major paradigm mm. shift for the Switch version. Also, I'm going to laugh so hard when it's literally just Pokemon. If it is Pokemon <laughs> Go, I think I'm going to give up on Pokemon. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I don't think it's going to be Pokemon Go. There's the rumors are fairly strong that it not that they're without considering some that. major change. They're apparently where it would feel like Pokemon. The again. big rumor right now is that they're essentially rebooting. Yeah. Or otherwise returning to Kanto. Kanto is involved and the rumor is that it's going to be Pokemon Go style fighting which is stomach turning to me. Yeah, that's no. not They a, won't do it. I guarantee it cuz Niantic did a really great job in a lot of ways, but they're not Game Freak. They're not no. Pokemon's dads. Whereas Pokemon, Pokemon's dads would not let that kind of literally unfun experience completely ruin if they the whole franchise. It to a, they're just not going to If they do changed that. it to something closer to like Pokemon Tournament or like the Dragon Ball Fighter Z style I stuff. I would still hate that. That would at least be a change I could I could understand and if yeah. they implemented it right could be interesting where if you had free control and now it's not just choose the right move but now it's like you actually do have to kind of like if i just throw razor leaf everywhere then whatever but i have to at least vaguely be like you know I, thing i do think it's time for a change but i yeah. more or less trust them not to completely fuck it up if they're going to make a core again mainline yeah series entry yeah it's not going to be batshit it's going to be some iteration on the original thing, I think. Or if it's completely new, yep. it's going to be half decent. It's not going to be garbage. I got to hope. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. <laughs> uh, okay, so we are actually <clears throat> running on out of time. So we, we should. I mean, we're we're kind of we getting have, there. We have time. But I think like if we want to like, keep time for our, our other stuff we want to talk about. So Sure. Um, um, yeah, I think those were. I think that was kind of the the, the yeah. main stuff I that I kind of was was looking at. Um, so Smash is the big. Parties. I mean, it's a huge question mark right now. But at E three in June, only a month and a half away. Um, Jesus, that's, that's not when June is. No, I keep forgetting Wait, that's May. Two and a half months oh. from now. Yeah, I keep forgetting May, guys. <laughs> it's gonna be May. <laughs> it's gonna be May. Okay, sorry. I'm really sorry. Anyway, two and a half months. Whatever. Yeah. it's still relatively <laughs> close, and we will see actual gameplay, actual footage of the game. Yeah, it's gonna be a Smash Five tournament. Yeah. At E3. That's going to be. People are not going to be good at it. No. People are. That's going to be. There's going to be some news when that. It'll be interesting around. to see how that gets handled. It's because in, when I, from what I remember when they were doing Smash 4, they had a bunch of pros come in, yeah. get a little familiar with the game, and then they had a tournament that I way. I assume they're going to do it kind of um, like that. That'd be my guess anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's encouraging uh, that they're they're uh, showing it that way with yeah, that yeah. focus because it shows they're probably paying even more attention. Yeah, to acknowledging it, you know? the competitive scene. Yeah. And it, whereas before with Melee, they not only disregarded the competitive scene, but like they actively shut it. down. Yeah, yeah. Project uh, M. Well, not just that. They didn't want, uh, what was it? Oh, um, Evo. Yeah. Uh, um, MLG. I, oh. Back when that was a thing. They or Maybe it was, it was Evo. Evo. I think it was Evo. <clears throat> Because the next year they came back being like, "Just kidding, we love Evo." Yeah, <laughs> whatever it was they like didn't want it to be streamed. Yeah, there's like you can't watch any of your. They Smash, were threatening Smash legal Brothers. action. Yeah. against Evo, and it's just like you guys, you got to realize you're way out of touch here. And then they did kind of yeah, like backpedal, right? And then, Whoa, yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they've actually, know, to, to their credit, have really course corrected since, and they're a lot yeah. more forward. Yeah, they've been yeah. way more. I think they're restructuring their weird YouTube thing now. Yeah, so it's like Nintendo's trying. You yeah. know. Um, um, they're still not quite on the same level as a lot of other like competitive games that like sure. hit, the, hit the top of the viewers on yeah. on yeah. on Twitch or whatever. It's, but honestly, like, it's just a nice change of pace to see Nintendo not being actively opposed to yeah. it anymore. Yeah. Even if it's just a like neutral stance, that's far preferable to how they were doing it ten years ago. Uh, so it's mm. it's nice to see a change. Yeah. Uh, um. So yeah, so we're all excited about Smash. I'm yep. really interested to see what they do. I hope it's not wildly different because I loved Smash 4 and I would love something similar to that on the Switch. Yep. If it's wildly different, I'm going to be bummed out. Same with Pokemon. But I'm happy that I, I still am suspecting that uh, the GameCube controller adapter update that came with version 4 is going to also go with that. They just put out the Wii. Con that was about one of the only things that I really loved about the Wii U is that they included a GameCube compatible adapter yeah. so you could still use the... 
That's ultimately, at this point, the GameCube controller is a Smash controller. Yeah, it is. You've been able to right. use it since Melee for every single yeah. game. What I'm expecting since. is they will release a Switch Pro controller yeah. with the button layout like a GameCube controller. They won't even have to. They put out they but, the firmware update that they put no, out. No, I, uh, I get you can do that with cables, but yeah. what if you want wireless? What if you want... True. Yeah, you know, that's like Not everyone is working WaveBirds anymore. You know, And I still think what I want you to do, Nintendo, is take a GameCube controller, cut take it... it Cut it in fucking half. Cut it in half. And are make you it saying, slide onto the system. Slide are you it. saying, are you suggesting to me that this is not the optimal controller output, uh, uh, you know, form? Oh, no. <laughs> Have you seen these? They are recycled Ouya controllers, or at least using the same mold as the Ouya controller, yeah. down to the button font for uh, Switch knockoff pro oh, controllers. Look, it actually says Ouya right on the front of it. It, it doesn't. Come on. It doesn't, Ben. Are Come you, on. Can you read? Is it yeah. he, he here? But, but anyway, it's spelled Why does it say Z? In their defense, these controllers aren't uncomfortable, and they're actually a pretty good deal for a sure. mostly working just, Switch Pro controller. They're just chunky, and they feel cheap. They feel a little cheap, yeah, but for, you paid, what, like 25 bucks for Something what's like functionally that. a working Pro controller, Something so that's like pretty that. cool. Um, um, but yeah, so one thing that I actually uh, was kind of neat with their major... So it seems like they're trying to release a major title about every six months. At launch, they had Breath of the Wild. End of 2017, they had Super Mario Odyssey. Start of 2018, we've got Kirby Star Allies. Uh, late 2018, it's looking like it's going to be Smash. Yeah. Uh, early 2019. That'll be like Christmas 2018, though, I think. It's going to be, yeah, near the end of the year. Early 2019 is looking like it could either be Pokemon or Metroid Prime 4, and whichever one isn't there is probably going to be a late 2019 release. Yeah. Like, that's three solid years of, like, Major, major, major like releases. quadruple A level yeah. stuff of like it's not just triple A titles, which they are, but this is like first party, like flagship level shit. Like the entire system could essentially coast on just Breath of the Wild and Mario and Star Allies and Smash and Metroid Prime and yeah. Pokemon. Like, but they don't have to, they don't have to, and they're not, they're not yeah. resting on their laurels clearly because they took a very aggressive uh, approach to inviting indie developers in walking them through the system and showing them hey we're we learned from last time we we changed our setup we want it to be easy to develop for and easy to work with yeah ea of all companies came out strongly in support of the switch uh, at the end of 2016 early 2017 saying like yeah they approached us really early in the game and we were kind of blown away by how approachable they were making themselves to be and their technology and yeah. and they realized like yeah we could program for this without having to even look at it again and like, game companies win because they love having their game be able to be completely portable or completely at home and like imagine portable make it either. we've never had that and now we're gonna have that and yep. it's gonna be great my toilet time is gonna change drastically um a lot of more a lot more time in the toilet is it even possible though for me to have more time on the yeah. toilet i have not peed since this video started Thank you very much. It's wow. <laughs> but if I had Dark Souls, the I would just the video be shouting started, from the bathroom. <laughs> the moment the video started, he did pee. I don't know how to tell you this. The smell is is horrendous, Shh. but they can't see it. It's a little... Anyway. <laughs> if you can't see it, it didn't happen. No, so, boy. All the stuff we talked about is great. We're running out of time. I wanted to talk about what are your major problems mm -hmm. with the Switch? Ben. Uh, Pass. Great, really, Rick, okay. Rickler. Um, I don't. I just. I don't. I, I don't have a switch. I don't use it as much. Like I don't have my own personal switch. Uh, I don't you were have in it for a while, but my yeah. ob my obvious one that I would go to is one that I thought that you would have that you would have called immediately, which is uh, it clearly has some line of sight le based issues with connecting the Joy Cons to the system. I, so that happened a lot when I was playing it, but that's also kind of our fault. We had a lot of shit in front of it and stuff all sure. over the table. And we and did like, not take advantage of the Hey, we'll fix your Joy Con program. That is true. These that's are on us. these are launch day Joy Cons. All four of these we have the. We have the, the docked yeah. one here. All four of these are launch day Joy-Cons. Right. So, um, like, we can't really fault them for that because they admitted the mistake, yeah. offered help, and we were just like, it's close enough. Um, yeah. I guess the uh, uh, since you did start with me, the only other, there seems to be some problems when you try to dock it and it doesn't, like, connect, and we've yeah. had some problems with that. That I mean, could also be our kooky hop yeah. hodge setup. But, like, no, it's I not that. Those, I've tested without. I wouldn't and call those problems with the system. Like, the system right. itself is yeah. fine. I, I like everything that they're doing with it. I wish I had one. Mm -hmm. the, that's my big complaint. I wish I had my own you hear that a good complaint somebody said Ben Mooney a switch <laughs> but yeah the docking issue we every now and then yeah maybe once a month maybe a little less frequently than that we'll have an issue where we go to record and we for whatever it's so easy way to tell if this thing is docked if you hit the power button and the screen turns on That's it's not connected it's not correctly properly docked. yeah, yeah. Uh, what that means is either the 
AC adapter is not plugged in or the USB-C that connects it out to some other, or sorry, the HDMI that connects it out to whatever you're looking at it on isn't connected. Even when they're both plugged in, sometimes it has a problem. What I found interesting is that Nintendo recently made the news for uh, uh, someone figured out that the Switch uh, and the, uh, the Switch dock and also the AC adapter draws power above USB-C specifications. Uh, Almost triple the allotted amount, yeah. which is why if you plug in something that is not the, the Nintendo actual one. Nintendo adapter, it doesn't work, it right. doesn't work great yep. and doesn't yep. connect huh. right and may that not even charge sense, it at all. I, for a while, I had a USB-C MacBook and uh, none of that shit would work, Didn't even though it work. seemed like it should. Yeah, that's weird because I've used my phone charger on the Switch. It and can it, work. It, it probably works. charges just, just probably a third as much. Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. It and it probably fun. wouldn't power it through the dock to the TV. That's, uh, I think that's more that's yeah, probably sure. the The dock issue. almost entirely requires it. We actually had issues shortly after it came out because I misplaced the adapter and we were plugging other stuff in and nothing worked. Yeah. Nothing would charge and was like, we're kind of screwed if we yeah, can't. Right. We plugged it in and it worked fine. This kind of ties into my frustration yeah. is that it's such a perfect portable system and the dock is functionally just a big adapter. Yep. Why yep. haven't they found a way to make what's like a dongle or a little cable that does the most of like, I don't need the USB ports. It doesn't need to be fancy. It just needs to have basically USB-C in HDMI out. Um, and that would make it twice as portable. Somebody, like, you know, somebody's going to figure out. There is a Chinese knockoff slash Kickstarter that bought the Chinese knockoff and repackaged it um, that can do that. But I've heard there's input lag. So I need to look into that. That's not good. But I would love that seems like a simple, easy thing. And then it's extra portable because everyone's yeah. got an HDMI cable lying around. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. There's that would be so much easier. I keep one under my pillow just in case. For yeah. You probably do because we're running out of room to fucking put them. We have a zillion HDMI. <laughs> um, my, I had other flaws. What about you? What other fall or <laughs> faults? With I mean, I, I wasn't going to point out any of your flaws, but that's that's entirely up you to you. You don't even need that's to. That's a whole They're different video. All blindingly <laughs> evident. <laughs> um, I, I no real. I, it's hard to. It's honestly hard to. It, it was annoying weird. to have to buy an SD card, but it makes sense. It feels... But that's like really nitpicking. Now. Yeah. I've, most of the problems with the Switch, I feel, are like fairly nitpicky. Like yeah. you're yeah. looking for an issue. The, the, the course, the system itself and that's the great. games that they have for it and how you just use it all works great. Yeah. yeah. It's all goot. I feel like we're... It's, it's tricky because like we're kind of gushing about it. Well, and if you're just coming at this with no knowledge of us or or the situation or whatever, this could look like we're just coming out as like Nintendo shells being like, "Look how great it is!" Get the but look. But honestly, well, no, I would shit fucking real hard love, on the Wii U. I would love to be a shill for Nintendo. Yeah. I will <laughs> take your money all day, every day, Nintendo. The but the point is, we haven't. yet. But instead, <laughs> we've been giving you money to play your system, and I think that's a little unfair. The fact of the matter is, <laughs> at least for me, so prior to 2017, I anytime someone asked me what I thought the best system was I would give them I would tell them like I don't I can't I can't reduce it to one I would pick three in no particular order it'd be the Super Nintendo the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox 360 for very different reasons but all of them had yep. a very similar level of like pick up and play all three had excellent libraries of games yep. again for different reasons the Xbox 360 their big thing was their indie titles the Xbox Live Arcade PlayStation 2 and Super Nintendo relied a lot more on their actual like first and second yeah. party stuff. See, you're all forgetting about yeah. the best console, the PC. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> when are you but, guys going to stop? <laughs> it feels weird because I'm having the same kind of thoughts about the Switch already. It's only been 13 months well, and I'm already this, like, this is incredible. Yeah. How is something like this never Most happened Most of my favorite games from the 360 generation are now yeah. on the Switch. Super Meat Boy, Dark Souls, Skyrim. All those games yeah. are now... Nintendo has access Looking to that. Looking better and portable. Especially with so it's Microsoft. Like edging out the 360 for Especially me. with Microsoft ending their support of the live arcade. They, they yeah. haven't done the live arcade in about three years, I think, yeah. which moved everybody to Steam. And then yeah. Steam fucked up its green light it and is now focusing on making games again. So Steam is also starting to lose their indie support. And people are like, mm, So Switch. now we're down to, yeah, now yeah. we're down to the Switch. PC because you can still yeah. I mean outside of Steam you can still do that uh, yeah. through through and Steam, Ubisoft and Steam, um, is, Steam is still decent for indie games oh, like sure. it's not like it's a pile of no, garbage no, 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 anymore no. The, the, the green light system crashed it's, and burned it's a little super saturated now so yeah. it's hard to find yeah. the better stuff the Switch is making uh, is making its play right now for being yep. king of the indie titles. Yep. Like, and there's almost no real competition for that right now. So even so, now you have 
first party titles, these massive hits every six months, six to eight months, and they alone could basically carry the system. You have indie titles. They've got reaching all the way back, really. There's no reason they can't go you know, 10, 15 years to the past, but they've got new ones too. Like it'll do two plus or whatever. And Isaac, uh, Binding of Isaac, Afterbirth plus and all of these other things there, they have all that. And now they've been spending so much time building up their third party support as well that they, they have all three of the main pieces that are required for a really good, fun system. Yeah. And they're kind of nailing it right now. Yeah. yeah. No, they... my, my biggest complaint mm-hmm. outside, like non-physical based is going to be um, if anything, to a point, they are porting a little bit more than I'd like from other Nintendo systems like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming to the Switch. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is coming to the Switch. Well, it's, already- or it's already on the Switch, but like it was a Wii U title they brought over. And like I get the, the, the sense they're trying to like salvage some of their bad Wii that's U it. sales. And I have no problem with that. I'm glad of, they did. Because yeah, if, if yeah. I just I hope they played Mario Kart 8 unless it came to the Switch. You know what I mean? Like did I play Mario Kart 8. Yeah, because you made me, but <laughs> never, on my, never on my own. But I played a shit ton of it on the Switch for fun. That's, that's fair. I, I hope that they kind of keep it reasonable. That's my only worry is like, if they get too attached to porting and yanking in old stuff that has existing Nintendo support, I don't know how I feel about I, I that. I feel you, but, but I mean, it hasn't slowed them down at all. Kirby Star no. Allies brand new, Zelda's brand new, Mario Odyssey's brand new, and all oh, of these yeah. are amazing top of the now. franchise for each one. Like, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And actually, this this goes into what my complaint was going to be. Yeah. They also, network stuff still seems a little half-baked. That's never been Nintendo strong, so sure. they, they have some improvements to make there. And including that, though, Virtual Console, it would be so easy for them. They're getting there. To print fucking money. They just redid all the ROMs for the SNES Mini and the Nintendo Mini and yeah. whatever's coming next. So they have all of these things ready to go. Yeah. They have the licenses worked out. They have new versions with safe I states think and the, all the, the shit. The clamoring that the system would have for a high def yeah. Super Smash Brothers melee remake. I'm not even I agree with you. Yes. I'm just saying like that's part of that problem. Like there's so much that they could put on yeah. that yeah. people will f- kick teeth in to get. Like People have been wanting HD Melee for fucking ever, and they yeah. can just do it. Right. And they, they can should. just do it on their own. Why don't they do it? But even that, that's a little more complex because yeah. now we're dealing with the GameCube. I'm talking Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Sure, sure. Game Boy. Start with that. There's no reason you can't have everything up to the D. You could even have the DS mostly on here because of the touchscreen. Like, they could be doing so much in like such low hanging fruit. The to do a really good remaster of Melee is going to take some work. Even just a re-release without remastering it would it would would uh, yeah, if you could play that online yeah. like through Nintendo's like Absolutely. oh my god. But that would still take some work. They literally just made all those ROMs ready to go with like fast forward or rewind or whatever the feature is. Like all the new features they want for their stuff on the SNES Mini. You there there it has to be possible to dump them onto the Switch and let me pay oh, sure. 3 bucks a game for all of them. And I would I would spend probably a hundred bucks <laughs> yeah, yeah. for old games that I have bought four or five times just I, to have them portable with me. I miss the Super Nintendo generations generation of games and like I would replay all We all do, still baby girl. Favorite. Chrono Trigger no, no, is staring no. me in the face. Not, my favorite. Not I missed them. Oh, I you missed them. them. Right, oh. right, right. I didn't have the first game system I had was a 64. Yeah, in oh, elementary man. school, Ben was just too busy macking on the women. He just <laughs> had no time for the game. I mean, the N64 had many good games, but I, I owned a Super Nintendo, I owned an N64. And there was definitely a level of kind of awkwardness and disappointment in in the N64 library that was not present for the Super Right, and that's why I feel so awkward and disappointing. Right, because you missed the good one and (laughs) you got the bad one, (laughs) which is the story of our lives. And And like we did it, remember we tried to do a top twenty video for the Nintendo 64 and we fucking couldn't. We were like, it was tough. Eleven, it got tough. There were eleven good games. The first half that was easy, and then after that it got a little bit tricky. But yeah, Um, Um, yeah. So I'm just saying it's idiotic i mean I, maybe they're trying to pace themselves or maybe they're trying to really get it right yeah. or maybe they really are going to do some magical subscription service where it's super cheap to have access to all the games and that would be cool and worth the wait but it kind of just feels like you idiots just let me just shut up and take my money yeah and yeah. let me buy portable chrono trigger well so they they closed down the wii virtual console the the wii shop or whatever mm-hmm. it was the wii shop channel mm-hmm. um literally like a week ago yeah. I'm wondering if that's uh, them trying to shift their resources and maybe they can't hopefully. really have two digital probably like, bit, yeah. fronts at the same time. That would be interesting. So and that it, would be exciting. Yeah. Mm. I mean, who at this point is anyone actually buying Wii Shop stuff? The, the irony that. is I, I was probably going to end up having that be the way we played Mega Man 9 and 10. 
I think I still have those on that Wii right there, so yeah. we might be fine. If not, we can probably boot up one of the yeah, Xboxes um, or PS3s or something. Yeah, like that. I'm sure we'll have a way to do that. But I saw that and was like, oh, shit, that's yeah. tricky timing. I hope we're fine. Um, I think we're fine. Yeah. All right, so uh, we got to wrap up. So closing thoughts. Uh, I honestly, the way that the Switch is going, it's it's easily in my mind on track to be what I would point to as the best console. Yep. It is yep. loaded with fun games, hundreds. Literally, it has it has half the entire library size of the Super Nintendo in a year. Like, yep. it's throwing tons of really good games out there, very accessible. I mean, like, Hammer Watch, Lovers in Inner Space, there's, there's all these amazing games that I keep hearing great things about and just haven't even looked at. Yeah, yeah. there's so many. It's Snake Pass. You had Snake Celeste. Pass on our Switch for over a year now. Yep. Celeste, uh, I gotta play. Yeah, yeah I've heard Celeste is yep. excellent. Like, there's a ton. Well, a there's Dead so Cells, I think, is coming to the Switch, I read. Nice. Right? Oh, nice. Hollow Knight. Yep, Hollow Knight's stuff. coming. Uh, Hyper Light Drifter's coming. Like, yep. yeah, so fucking much. So many damn good games, and it's a little game called Dark Souls. Yeah, uh, yeah. May. I've heard I of know. that. It seems uh, like yeah. this quaint little art title yeah. that nobody's it's heard like of. It's like an underground kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's fun, and it doesn't feel overloaded with other stuff. My biggest complaint when Sony started changing things around for PS3 and PS4 and Microsoft for the Xbox One was they're starting to feel more like multimedia. I hate consoles. The Xbox One. I just fucking hate it. I'm not in love with the Xbox One. I I like it in a lot of ways. Ways, but I only use it to watch YouTube. It's my YouTube box. Like if you put the Xbox One interface on screen next to the Xbox 360 interface and yep. showed someone who didn't know anything, they'd be like, this one looks dated and this one looks good. And the 360 is the one that's good. Like, yeah. it's just more user friendly. It just doesn't crash all the time when you try to watch a YouTube video. Yeah, but that's the thing. Nintendo, the Switch is still focused on games. There are other things you can do on there. Not a ton. Be nice if they got Netflix and stuff working on there. Yeah. But ironically, because it's portable, I would use it more for Netflix and any other of those systems <laughs> sure. because it's bigger than my phone screen. So I yeah, can watch a movie. Lay in bed it, you know? and plug it in and you're good. Yeah. Or I'm um, planes, but yeah, same thing. That too, yeah. But yeah, that's I I think it has every every uh, uh property it needs to be to run away with being the best console that has been released to yeah. date. Forty what, forty two years into gaming. Yeah. So I would say in summation, yep. uh switch good. Yeah, switch good. Murder bad. Murder bad. <laughs> I'm lonely. And we'll see you next time. This has been the D-Pad. Uh, we love you. Later. Later.